Today's adventure brings us back to the Downs Brook Trailhead. We'll be taking the UNH Trail headed up to Hedgehog Mountain, starting out on the Downs Brook Trail. So after a grueling journey on the Downs Brook Trail, you know, that whole 60 yards, <laughs> we've come up to the trail junction with the UNH Trail heading up this way. So this is the trail so far, it's nice and flat, and it looks just like it could have been a railway. Well, that's what this is, it's an old rail bed from the Swift River Logging Company. Check out the UFO. Nope, it's a spiderweb. All right, so we've come to the trail junction with the UNH Trail and the Cross Country Ski Trail. We went down that way when my lovely wife was coming up. We went wrong. <laughs> you need to take a right here and follow it up that way. At point six, you will run into the loop junction, which is what we were actually looking for. But anyway, the UNH Trail, curious where it got its name from. I think it has something to do with the University of New Hampshire. You are correct then. They used to run a forestry camp right here near Hedgehog and the trail is named after the camp. All right, we come to the trail junction with the cross country ski trail, the West Loop, which goes this way. Do not confuse it with the UNH trail. That trail goes straight. We have yet to hit the junction for that loop. And right after that junction with the cross country ski trail, the incline starts. From everything I read, this is supposed to be easy to moderate. But we are moving on and it appears to be well blazed so far. We are at the trail junction for the loop on the UNH trail. We'll be doing it clockwise, so we'll be coming down this way and heading out this way. Now at that cross country ski trail junction, right after that, it's a steady up until you get here and it's gonna be a little bit flat. So since the trail junction, the trail's been relatively almost flat. I mean, you have small inclines like are coming right up here. But other than that, it's a great walk in the woods. That is our first significant up since the trail junction, where Charlotte is now. And you made it across the stream okay, huh? We did. Wow. All right, so I'm about to make a stream crossing here. Uh, <laughs> if you have a pup with you, bring water because there is none. It did rain here last night, but there's still no water. So when isn't a boulder called a boulder? Well, it's called the glacial erratic, of course. A little glacier erratic field going here. Our boulder field. Call it what you will. <laughs> Alright, when Fido gets here, provided he's not overly thirsty, he can get a drink. There's not much at all, but listen. It is running. Come up to an area where it's open slab. And it all looks kind of wet. <laughs> right from the rains last night. Cheryl's trying out some new tires today. Got herself some new hiking shoes. What do you think so far? Pretty good. The Columbia's. I'm a metal guy myself. We are running into areas of trail erosion. You can see it by all the roots. And because of the rain last night, these roots are slippery. All right, I believe that we have found the ledges. <laughs> Cheryl's working her way up with her new hiking shoes. They grip all right? Yeah. Hey, right, let's go check out these views. Well, this is how our day's going. How's yours going? Oh, my vertigo has come so far. It's a time I would never be this close to this edge. Welcome to the East Ledges. This is a view down in the valley. Coming up to past the Conaway. Following the ridge line over to Mount Pagus. Continuing along over there to Mount Chikora. And I believe right over there are the moats. Oh, the bloomeries are starting. We're walking along, well, the edge. <laughs> I'm not looking at the viewfinder. Just a shot of where we are looking back. And the ridge line up to pass the Conaway. Over the hedgehog. That was kind of steep, honey. You think they'll have ropes? <laughs> okay, when you come off the east ledges, you're going to come onto a section of the trail that you're going to question yourself because there is no blazing. It almost looks more like a stream bed. And you're wondering but, why you're going down. Yeah, and you're going down when you still need to go up. But trust it, there are faded blazes. And this is how it looks. That's mighty impressive. That's a crack in there. That is big. 
Big, 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 big. All right, we've skirted around the summit. Looks like we're going straight up to it now. All right, the trail's starting to get interesting. We're enjoying it a lot more as we go up. Yeah, this is your trail. <laughs> bump, 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 bump. They must be working their way down redoing the blazes because that's the best one we've seen since we left the east ledges. We're on our final approach to the summit. Now, if X marks the spot, then... Welcome to the summit of Hedgehog Mountain. This mountain is on 52 to view. It comes in at 2,532 feet tall. Where to get its name from? Well, with all the spruce trees up here, when it was viewed from the Albany Intervale, it kind of had a porcupine-like appearance. So, hence, Hedgehog. Coming over to the Tribe Pyramids. Coming down over to Scar Peak. Osceola, East Peak. Mount Kangamangas. Pretty sure that's Potash right in the front. Right there's Mount Flume. After Flume is Mount Huntington. Then over there in the back, Mount Lafayette. Coming in after that, Mount Hancock. Finishing up right behind this tree, Mount Carrigan. You know, we heard this was a popular mountain. We were surprised we ran into one other person today. But now coming down this side, amongst all these blueberry bushes, we're thinking it's probably a popular mountain towards the end of summer. And the blueberries are actually ripe. Because holy mackerel, I can't believe how many are out here. I don't know how well this will come out. It looks dark. But uh, you come off the summit, and there's a reason why it's only 0.9 back down to the loop junction. It looks like it's straight down. <laughs> Come to the trail junction with Allen's Ledge. I'm gonna take a run up here. It is the third viewpoint on Hedgehog Mountain. Mount Pogus. Right there is Chikora. Coming off of Blue Mountain, you've got South and middle moat. You have north moat. And this bad dude here is Bear Mountain. Out there is Iron Mountain and Cotter Dome. Followed by this thing is called Bartlett Haystack. Okay, then off of Bartlett Haystack, way out there. It's boot spur, and that's the great rock pile, Mount Washington. Oh, you can just make out the antennas. And then next to that is Tremont Mountain. All right, Mount Bemis and Mount Nancy, followed by Mount Lowell. So this is the view of the valley below Allen's Ledge. Hey, babe. Yeah. Where did Allen's Ledge get its name from? A guy named Jack Allen. Do you want to know the story? Sure. All right, he was a trapper and a hunter and a guide. He hung around the Albany Interval in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And according to Charles Edward Beals Jr., when someone asked Alan what the rocks were up the side of Hedgehog Mountain, and I quote, he said, them are called Allen's Ledge. <laughs> the gentleman died in 1912, but his name will stick around for a long, long time. And what a view from here, too. Gorgeous. I love this little swampy area. Any animals? No. Maybe. Who knows? Very beautiful. We are back to the trail junction from this morning. We have completed the loop. And as I said, we recommend clockwise. 
from here to the car we've already covered, so unless something interesting happens, we'll see you back at the trailhead. All right, we're back down to the trailhead. We've completed Hedgehog Mountain, number 34 on the list that we're not doing. <laughs> but uh, Allen's Ledge was the highlight of it for us, and a lot of traffic here on uh, the canyon. So until our next adventure, the end. <laughs>